Hi, I'm Steve Dynan, CEO of Carbut. Welcome to Tech Tips. Hey, Steve, thanks for coming and sitting down today. Uh, we have a new product here, which is a sway bar kit for the G8X chassis. And we wanted to get some information out to the public and car enthusiasts on what separates this new product, maybe from what's out of the market or what they've seen before. It's been a while since you've developed a sway bar kit. So I want to get into some new technology, materials that you use, and why you chose to go this route. Sure. So can you explain to us what the material is and uh, what the engineering process behind the four-point adjustability system? Yeah, it's a 5160 spring steel. And we picked it because of its ability to deflect a lot, not yield. And what that basically means is when one wheel hits a bump and the other one does, or the car is rolling and the, and the anti-roll bar articulates, it will flex more without yielding, which means it will return to its original position and keep its stiffness. It won't fatigue over time. Very nice. Now, how would that change handling characteristics? I see there's adjustable points on the bars. And how would that change the handling of the all-wheel drive cars? Yeah, it's a four-way adjustable on both ends, and it's the only bar in the market that is. And the reason I did that is I'm a real suspension person. I set up our race cars, and I've been racing for a lot of years. And I like the flexibility of being able to tune the suspension system. That's particularly important depending on what type of tires you use. Like some people run a larger stagger. Some people run you know, wider wheels. Some people run R compound tires with higher grip. And this enables you to get a, the balance of the car you want and control the roll. So how would you describe then the difference in a adjustable sway bar and non-adjustable sway bar, especially for guys who take their cars to the track or maybe do autocross events? How would this be a benefit to them? Yeah, most of the bars in the market are not adjustable in the front and only two holes in the rear. That really limits your ability. You're going to get pinned into a corner where you can't balance the car because you just don't have enough adjustment range. So you mentioned improving corner and balance. Can you elaborate on how the sway bars accomplish that? Yes. Um, as you generate more grip by adding more negative camber or wider wheels and tires or stickier tires, the car will roll more. And the stiffness of the anti-roll bars are designed by BMW to control the roll to an appropriate amount for the grip the car has stock. But once you increase the grip, the car is going to roll too much. It's going to feel like it's going to flop back and forth when you go into corners like S turns back and forth. It's also going to cause the tire to ride on the outside edge and reduce the grip of the tire. Um, the other aspects of anti-roll bars and spring rate relationships is when you come into a corner when the bar is, let's say, stiffer in the back, it unloads the inside tire and causes the car to rotate on the corner entry. And then the stiffer bar in the front will cause it to put down power and, and understeer on the way out. You can tune the relationship of the springs and the bars to achieve not only a balance in the middle of the corner, but also a balance on corner entry and corner exit. So your, so your speeds would be higher on both entry and exit. And the center. As well as you can help mitigate understeer, but yeah. also not bring it oversteer. Yes, but also you can tune different parts of the corner. Like, you know, if you run the bar in full soft in the, in the rear, it'll have corner entry stability. If you make the rear bar stiffer, it'll have be more lively on corner entry, depending on what your style. It also depends on the tires you're running. I mean, for example, Pirelli's understeer more than Michelin's. Michelin's oversteer more. So just changing the brand of tire for the same given size requires a different adjustment. There's, there's no way you can actually balance the car without a tool like this. Yeah. Now, it's been uh, a while since we've come out with sway bar kits. Uh, we used to sell, you know, quite a bit back in, uh, in our days together. Why, why now and why on this chassis was this the first time that you decided to engineer a sway bar kit? Well, I always intend to make anti-rollers and carbon, carbons. So like I said, I'm a suspension guy and I, and I want the car to handle right. Uh, we struggled a lot with uh, the quality that we wanted with the vendors that were making the parts because we don't bend anti-roll bars, we farm those out. Uh, and we had some quality issues, so it took us a long time to get it right, but quality of, of the materials and the product itself was super important to me and always has been, so I'd rather be a little bit late to market and have the best possible product. Very nice. Now, what other suspension components would fit well with the sway bar kit, um, whether it's the monoballs or tow links? How, how do they all relate to each other as a suspension system as a whole? Yeah, um, obviously, like we talked about, the relationship of spring to bars is important and also even the alignment. Um, so uh, the ability to adjust the camber, the ability to control the toe with the toe links and monoballs, uh, the stiffness of the springs in conjunction with the bars is what makes the whole thing work. You, certainly, you can buy the components separately, but we've tuned them all to work in a, a symbiotic way 
which is why when we got our road test at Car and Driver Motor Trend, we pulled 1.1 and 1.15 Gs on a streetcar without aero, which is almost unheard of. And it's because of the combination of the parts. Now we have the kit out for the all wheel drive platform. I'm assuming next is going to be for the rear drive cars. Yes. And how does that change the characteristics on the rear drive car versus the all wheel drive car, which I know understeers a little more from the factory, but how on a rear drive car, especially with the power that we're making now for some of these cars, how does that change on the rear wheel drive cars versus all wheel drive cars? Well, the all wheel drive cars have a tendency to understeer because when you apply power, torque is transferred to the front wheels, to the front differential, and that creates understeer. So on the all wheel drive car, you wind up running the rear bar stiffer and the front bar softer. On a rear wheel drive car, when you've added a lot of power, it wants to light up the rear tires and get sideways off the corner. And so you're going to wind up running the front bar a little stiffer and the rear bar a little softer. So the balance of the two will be different because of the basic drive characteristics of the car. Um, it's also part of the reason we put so many adjustments in it. You know, you don't have to make another bar for you have a rear wheel drive car. You just go from this hole on the, on the X drive car to this hole on the rear wheel drive car, and you can achieve a perfect balance with both. Well, you're holding some hardware in your hands, yes, um, which is a unique design, I think, in the marketplace as well. I know you over-engineer stuff. I know yeah. you want it to go right, and that's why it's taken this amount of time to come to market. Can you talk about that little red thing in your hand and also yeah. what it goes in? Yeah, so this is a, a built aluminum uh, sway bar clamp. A lot of people use stamped sheet metal, but it flexes and bends and just doesn't last very long. These are very expensive to make, but they're beautiful and they're super strong. We also built in a zert pitting because you run a urethane bushing and when the urethane bushing dries out over time, it squeaks. Inside the urethane bushing is reservoirs and the reservoirs hold grease and there's a hole in the top. And without taking the bar apart, you can just put a, 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 a grease gun on here and squirt grease in here and it goes into the reservoir and refills the reservoir and stops the bar from squeaking. Super simple maintenance. Wow. So it seems like you thought of everything on here. Is there anything else that you wanted to add on the sway bars or suspension kits to the people that are looking to add these to their track days or daily driven cars? Yes, we're coming out with sway bar drop links as well. So if you have a coilover kit and sometimes the, the height of each corner of the car is slightly different and it preloads the bar and then the bar handles differently one way versus the other way. So we're offering an optional drop link, one for the one, one, one for the rear. So when you have the crop on your pad doing your corner widths, you can zero out the bars and take preload out the sway bars something we do on the race car. Awesome. Well, good. Well, thank you, Steve. I think that's all the information that I wanted to get out of the sway bar kit. And I appreciate the tech tip today. Thank you.